So we are recording now. So when you want to approach a circuit like this, I like to think of it as math because we're in a math course. So when I look at this circuit, I see I've got, you know, a parallel setup. I've got some things in series. So what I do before I even start anything and start redrawing circuits is I, I make brackets like order of operations. Those are in line. They're kind of contained. They're nested within the parallel branch. I'm going to nest those and then I'm going to draw in a different color another set of brackets around the parallel thing. And if I resolve everything in the green brackets, I'm just going to have two things in a series circuit. So my first redraw I'll do in blue to show that I'm going to combine R1 and R2. So pardon my illustrations because they're always terrible. I'm going to make this circuit look like this. Woo! There we go. Okay, this will be R1, 2. And I know that for series circuits, if they are two resistors in series, you can just add them together. So I've created a situation like this. I still have R3 down here. And at this point in time, I'm going to recognize that one kilo ohm is a thousand ohms. So I know that's multiply one by a thousand and it turns that into there. Okay. What I did forget to do, because I'm a little off my game, <laughs> is write in all my information that I have so far. So here, let's bring the table in. I'm going to scoot over. And the beauty of using a table is that you know that if you have everything except for one space in a row or a column, you have the tools to find that last space. So it kind of just directs you about what to solve. And R3 is 400. And make sure you tell me if I do something wrong, because I always do. Okay, so when I look at this, I, I'm missing in the total column, I have 300, but I have a couple blanks. But if I look at the R row, I only have one piece of information. So I know that my next step will be to find RT. And that's what I was working on here. I got distracted and started in the wrong spot. Okay, so now I'm going to make a green circuit, which is going to collapse the parallel circuit, because that's my next set of brackets. That's my next thing in my order of operations. So I'm going to change this circuit into something like this, which gets me very close to having a total resistance. 1000 ohms. And now let's think about the math that we're going to do. You know that if you want to find the um, total resistance of a two branch circuit, you have that cheat where you can do the resistance of the top times the resistance of the bottom divided by the resistance of the top plus the resistance of the bottom. And you can avoid using that one over RT formula that way. And when you do all that math, it's going to give you 200 ohms. So here I am right now. And if I just add those together, I've found one thing. Okay. And if I do some math, we know that V equals IR. So if I want to find IT, I'm simply going to do V divided by R. And that should give me 0 0.25. Okay, so now I'm going to pull out another color. And we're going to go back to our green circuit. I know that current in series is the same everywhere. So I know that this combined thing has 0 0.25. And I know that this has 0 0.25 amps. But the 200 ohm resistor is really a combination of three resistors. So that doesn't mean that R1, R2, and R3 all get 0.25. But I know that coming in, I have 0.25. And coming out, I have 0.25. But when I look at R4 over here, that's what it gets. Because it's in series. And so series, uh, sorry, current in series is the same everywhere. All right, if you have two pieces of information in a column, you can find the third with math. So I know that V4 is going to be I4 times R4, or 250 volts. OK, we're going to move back to looking at the parallel branch. The last thing we're going to do before we do that, though, we know that we used up 250 volts right here. We know we started with 300 volts over here. How much? How many volts are we going to drop in the entire parallel thing? 300 minus 250, 50 volts are going to have to drop across here. 
and we'll get into on my next slide how we're going to do that because we're going to go back. In. So this has all the information we just found and we need to look more closely at the parallel branch. So we know, I'm just going to redraw it over here and write down what we knew. We knew that we had 0.25 amps coming in and we know that we're going to drop in each branch 50 volts because voltage drop in parallel is equal in all branches. All right. The current is going to split and it might not split equally. I don't know that yet. You can make some assumptions by looking at the values of the resistors, but let's say we didn't know that. I know that across R1 and R2, I'm going to drop 50 volts, but some part will go to one and some part will go to the other. So I don't really know that division yet. But if I go down to R3, there's only one resistor in that branch and I need to drop all 50 volts across that. So I can commit to this. If you know two things in a column, you know the third by math. I3 equals wah, V3 divided by R3. So I'm going to take 50. I'm going to divide it by 400, which I probably should be able to do in my head. No, I wasn't going to go. I wasn't going to whip that out of my head, but I should have known that. Okay. So what do I know now? I'm going to switch colors again. I know that I used up 0 0.125 amps here. 0.25 came in, 0.125 went to the bottom branch. How much went to the top branch? The math is 0.25 minus 0 0.125, which is going to be the same. And that's the I for one and two. So I can fill that in now. If you know two things in a column, you know all three by math. So we're going to do V1, which is going to be, sorry, I1 times R1, which is that 0 0.125 amps multiplied by 300. Hopefully that's, fuck a duck. I can't do anything today. Is my math wrong here? <laughs> Oh yeah, 37.5, phew. <laughs> Sometimes it's in my head, right? Today is not doing it. I2, R2, 0 0.125. And I'm going to multiply that by 100. And that's going to give me 12.5. So my table has been filled out. So whatever the question was asking me, current across R3, you know, voltage drop at R4, it's right there for you to find the information. What checks can I do to make sure I did things right? Well, these two numbers better add up to R3, right? Because this is the 37.5 volts here and 12.5 12, 12 volts here. And that needs to equal 50, which it does. My current in the top and bottom branch needs to add up to 0.25, which it does. So just go around, make sure that all your stuff is right and you should be fine. Now we're going to look at a much more challenging circuit, but we're going to use the same approach to solve it. So the first thing I'm going to do this time is I'm going to write down the information I can already in my table. So looking at the power supply, I have 80 volts and I can put in all the individual resistances. So I see five ohms, 20 ohms, five ohms, six ohms, and 10 ohms. All right, so that's what I know. So the next thing I'm gonna do is think about how I'm going to collapse this circuit. And like I said before, we like to think about this as brackets in math. So what is contained within what? So I see a big parallel branch here and here. And within the bottom branch, there's another parallel piece and a series piece. So let's deal with that parallel piece first. And I'm gonna collapse this and make R23. So what will my circuit look like now? There's R1. Along the bottom, I have R5. And in this other parallel branch here, I'm going to get 
this kind of situation. Okay, R23. Now we'll go back to black for that. Is 20 times 5 divided by 20 plus 5, which equals 4 ohms. So I have 4 ohms here, 6 ohms here, 5 ohms here, and 10 ohms at the bottom. Okay. I'm going to pick another color for my second level. I'm going to try orange. And what I'm basically collapsing now is the whole bottom part of that parallel branch. So I create a picture that looks like this. And labeling it again. My five ohms at the top hasn't changed. Right here, I'm going to do four plus 10, which this is basically going to make R234, all of them combined, equals four plus, sorry, six equals 10 ohms. I said four plus 10, but that was the answer. Okay, and we still have our 10 ohms down here. My next step is to collapse again to make a series circle circuit. So this top parallel part, I'm going to squish into one resistor, which will be R1234. <laughs> and R1234, same cheat, 10 times 5 is 50 divided by 10 plus 5, which I have to do on my calculator. And that gives me 3.33 ohms. So what have I made? another circuit. With 3.33 and 10. Last step, combine the two series. And you have a single resistor, 10 plus 3.33, which is 13.33 ohms. That's my total resistance. It came from all resistance one, resistor one, two, three, four, and five combined, but respecting the fact that you cannot just add them together, they combine in different ways. So I can write this in my table. I know that if I have two pieces of information in that column, I can find I. And the math for that is simply going to be, and I've run out of room here, IT equals VT divided by RT. 80 divided by 13.33, 6. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this table with me, hopefully, <laughs> to the next slide. Perfect. I need to figure out what else I know. So I have six amps, IT. It's coming into this situation. And I know at the end, I'm going to have six amps coming out, but there's some crazy going on there. I'm going to continue with my series current, which is always the same as the total current. And here, I'm going to get six amps. All right, that's two pieces of information at R5, which means I know that the voltage drop across R5 will be 10 times 60 or 60 volts. Okay. All right. Now I know a little bit more about what's going on. I started with 80 volts. I'm going to use up 60 volts at R5, which means what's left to go into the whole parallel mess. 80 minus 60, 20 volts. Heads in. Or get, sorry, that's a bad analogy. 20 volts gets dropped across. Sorry, my bad. I was thinking about my math and was not paying attention to what I was doing. All right, so we're going to drop 20 volts across that, which means that we're going to drop 20 volts in the top branch, and we're going to drop 20 volts in the bottom branch. And the bottom branch is, there's a lot going on that's very difficult to figure out right now. But if I look at the top, I've only got one resistor. So the voltage drop across R1 is 20 volts which means the current is going to be 20 volts 
V1 divided by R1 equals four amps. And we're always using the same math over and over and over again. Well, that's cool, because that tells me about something that's happening with the current. I know that I had six amps hitting this junction point, and suddenly I know that four amps went this way. So redrawing the bottom branch, which is kind of my last mystery area, with the information that I know, now know. So we have R2, which is two ohms. We have R3, which is five ohms. And we have R4, which is six ohms. What else do I know? I know that 20 volts is gonna go all the way across. And I know that two amps, six minus four equals two amps went into the bottom branch. Okay, so this current is going into a parallel bank. It's going to split somehow. I don't know how, I can't figure that out yet because I don't know a voltage in there. And then it's gonna come back together. It's gonna be two amps across the six ohm resistor. That's R4. So I know that I'm gonna get two amps here. And suddenly I know that six times two is 12 volts. So 12 volts got dropped here. 20 volts over the entire branch. What is dropped across the, the parallel bank? 20 minus 12, eight volts. What do you know about voltage in parallel? It's equal in each branch. So eight volts to the top, eight volts dropping in the bottom, which means I know this and I know this and I know everything. Eight divided by 20 gives me 0 0.4. I'm gonna bet this one's gonna be 1 1.6, but I better check. Eight divided by five is 1.6. Circuit solved.